Christ is in our midst. Welcome to Spiritual Calisthenics. Today, on August 7th, we commemorate the 8th Sunday of Matthew, the afterfeast of the transfiguration of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as well as the holy righteous martyr Demetrius. Regarding St. Demetrius, this martyr who lived during the reign of St. Constantine the Great was a Persian by race and an idolater by religion. He was catechized by a certain Christian named Abaras. He went to Nisbis, a city of Mesopotamia, where he was baptized and donned the monastic habit in a certain monastery. He afterward ascended a mountain and there endured extreme ascetical struggles, working miracles for those who came to him, and converting many unbelievers. Julian the Apostate learned of these things as he was marching against the Persians in 363, and at his command, this saint and his two disciples were stoned to death as they were chanting the sixth hour. Your martyrs, O Lord, in their courageous contest, you received as the prize of the crowns of incorruption and life from you, our mortal God. For since he possessed your strength, he cast down the tyrants and wholly destroyed the demon's strengthless presumption. For Christ God, by his prayer, save our souls, since you are merciful. The epistle for this Sunday from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Brethren, I appeal to you by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree, and that there be no dissension among you, but that you may be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there is quarreling among you, my brethren. Now, Chloe, this is very important because, again, it shows that the idea of misogyny in the church is a little bit of a myth. Chloe is in charge of the people of Corinth, And because she is one of the landowners, she is the one that is in charge of the people. So it's kind of like a parish council president. And so she is the one that is reported to St. Paul the things that are going on there to basically say, there's problems in Corinth. We need your help. What I mean is that each one of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, lest any should say that you were baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel not with eloquent wisdom, lest the cross of Christ be emptied of its power. In other words, Christ is the one that empowers. Christ is who we are baptized into. We cannot have these camps of, oh, Father this, or Father that, or Bishop this, or Bishop that. It is one church. We are baptized into Christ's holy church. And so in Corinth, we are seeing that there were camps, that people were basically saying, oh, I belong to this uh, father, I belong to this disciple. And that's not healthy. That's not holy. Uh, no one person outside of Christ encapsulates the church. The Gospel according to St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus saw a great throng, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him, and he said, This is a lonely place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. Now, this is important because all of the region of Galilee is coming to hear him. And there's no one village that has enough space. And so that's why he's out in the wilderness. So all these villages have come together to basically hear him talk. They're miles away. And they thought, this is important. This is important enough for us to stay and listen rather than go home at a decent hour. And so Jesus Christ is saying, you're going to feed them. Now, of course... What are they going to feed them? What the disciples should be feeding is with the words of God to help edify the soul. But Christ is going to use this miracle to go further. They said to him, we have only five loaves here and two fish. Now, the Blessed Theophilus says that the five loaves represent the Pentateuch, the original five books of the Old Testament, of which Christ is the fulfillment. He is the prophet, prophesied one from Genesis. And that the two fish represent the two uh, testaments, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, other church fathers look at it as the two fish representing the humanity and the divinity of Jesus Christ. But either way, the numbers five and two are very significant here because it is showing us that this miracle is directly related to the personhood of Christ, who is himself the bread of life. Then he, or, then he said, bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they took up twelve baskets full of the broken leftover pieces, twelve symbolizing the twelve tribes of, of Israel as well as the twelve disciples. And think about that, twelve full baskets. 
And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. And so some people have categorized this to be that maybe there was 15,000, maybe there was 20,000, maybe there could have been as many as 30,000 people that were fed off of those five breads and two fish. Then he made his disciples go into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. Basically, he was giving out uh, pieces at the end, blessing them. Now, why is this significant for us in today's context? Uh, when we have our Articlesia service, it's the same concept. The Articlesia service, the blessing of the five loaves, was made so that people during the Agripnias, the vigils, would be able to have something to sustain them throughout the night as they pray until they get to the liturgy the next morning. So that is why the proper place of the Articlesia service, the blessing of the five loaves, is during the Vesper service the night before, uh, so that you are basically able to be sustained during the services that are going to come. Now, of course, this again represents that Jesus Christ is the bread of life and that he has come to save us. And this is going to be very, very important uh, because later we're going to see that the crowds are following him and Jesus will castigate them saying, you're only following me because I gave you food. That's not what this is about. And so people need to look beyond what is the miracle and what is it trying to convey to our heart. I hope that you've enjoyed today's spiritual calisthenic. We're blessed and wonderful day.